Good morning, everyone. Today, our session will be about prevention of respiratory hazards through respiratory protection equipment. Our content for today's session, it will be about the availability of the respiratory protection equipment, which is including face mask, respirator, and powered air purifying respirator machines, and fit testing must be provided to all healthcare workers. The availability of respiratory protection equipment, including face mask, respirator, and proper machines, we have to consider that the proper selection and use of the respiratory protection device is really significant. So respiratory protection devices such as mask, respirator, or proper machines are examples of personal protective equipment that we use to protect the healthcare workers and others from acquiring infections. So it's really critical to recognize the proper selection of these devices and understand the difference between various types and different categories of these devices. First of all, we'll talk about the medical or surgical face mask. So face masks are not be shared and may be labeled as a surgical isolation dental or medical procedure mask. If a surgical medical mask properly are worn, will help pluck large particle droplets, splashes, sprays, or splutter that may contain germs such as viruses and bacteria, keeping them from reaching the wearer mouth and nose, and it's also help reduce exposure of the wearer's saliva and respiratory secretion to the others if the wearer itself has a respiratory infection signs and symptoms. Face masks are not intended to be used more than once. If the mask is damaged, wet or soiled, or breathing through the mask becomes hard or difficult, it should be removed immediately, and we should discard it appropriately and replace it with the new one. Hand hygiene always, always must be practiced accordingly in the effective way. Medical surgical face mask is considered to be contaminated once it has been used and should be discarded immediately post use. This poster showing you how to wear a medical mask safely. And we have some behaviors that we must, as a healthcare worker, do it all the time when we are wearing the mask. And in contrast or comparison, we have some activities that we are discouraged and we don't want and we shouldn't follow it when we are wearing the surgical mask or face mask. We have different protection level types of the surgical medical mask. We have level one, type one, level two, type two, level three, type three. And level one, type one, for general purpose medical procedures where the wearer is not at risk of blood or body fluid splash or to protect the staff and the patient from droplet exposure to microorganism. Example, patient with upper respiratory tract infection visiting the clinic. Level two or type two for use in emergency departments Dentistry, changing, dressing, or minor wounds, or healing wounds where minimal blood droplet exposure may be occur. So, example in endoscopy procedures. Level 3 or type 3, they are used for all surgical procedures, major trauma, first aid, or in any area where the healthcare worker is at a risk of blood or body fluid splashes, like in the orthopedic cardiovascular procedure. This slide, we need to define what's the meaning of respirator mask. So a respirator is a respiratory protective device designed only to achieve a very close facial fit and efficient filtration of the air particles. In this type, we have a surgical respirator. So also referred to as a medical respirator, it's recommend recommended only for use by the healthcare workers who need protection from both airborne and fluid hazards such as splashes, sprays, or droplets. So here we have a procedure that anticipated to reduce any body fluid exposure. So these respirators are not used or needed outside of the healthcare settings, and we have a minimum requirement for this type of respirators that must be available and must be um, uh, manufactured this respirator based on that. In this slide, 
we will discuss the differences between a medical surgical mask and respirator. So we have two types, surgical mask and respirator. So we will discuss two different aspects in both type, intended use and purpose and uses. For the surgical mask, the intended use and purpose, so fluid is resistant and protect the wearer against large droplets, splash, or bodily or other hazardous fluid sprays. And it protects the patient from the wearer's respiratory emissions. And it's used as a part of PPE during a care of patients under droplet isolation precaution, surgical procedure, or as a source of control if we have infected case and we are instructed that patient to wear a surgical mask as to control the source of infection. In contrast, in the respirator, reduces healthcare workers' exposure to particles, including small particles erosal and large droplets, only non-oil erosal. And it's used as a part of PPE during providing care to the patient under airborne isolation precaution because it's providing extensive filtration of the respirator. The other aspects that in differences between the medical surgical mask and respirator that the surgical mask fit, it fits loosely leaving gaps between the mask and your face, does not require fit testing or user seal check. In contrast, in the respirator, they are designed to fit tightly, creating a seal between your face and the respirator, and it's require a fit testing as a user seal check as a mandatory when, uh, whenever you are wearing the respirators. Testing here in the surgical mask tested all for particle filtration efficiency, BFE, and bacterial filtration efficiency, BFE, plus fluid resistant differential pressure and flammability. In contrast, in the respirator tested for the, the same thing for the BFE and BFE bacterial filtration efficiency, plus fluid resistant, plus differential pressure and flammability. When we are talking about the respirator fit testing, we have to consider the frequency of fit testing. Fit testing must be performed before using a respirator and must be repeated annually. Fit testing must be conducted when there are changes of the respirator or facial changes, examples of conditions that would require additional fit tests of an employee, including but are not limited to weight loss, cosmetic surgery, facial scaring, the installation of dentures or absence of dentures that was individual wear when they are doing the fit test for the first time. We have two types of fit tests, qualitative and quantitative. In this slide will discuss the qualitative fit test is a pass or fail test that uses a sense of taste, smell, or reaction to an irritant to detect leakage into the respirator face piece. So it is mainly subjective test. However, in the quantitative fit testing, uses a machine to measure the actual amount of leakage into the face piece. It doesn't rely on the sense of taste, smell, or irritation to detect leakage, and it produces a numerical result called fit factor, and the fit factor of at least 100 is required for half mask respirator. So mainly this type of test is objective and it depends on the machine quantitative number. We'll explore deeply about the PAPAR or powered air purifying respirator. Is it equipment that protects the user by filtering out contaminants in the air and using a battery operated blower to provide a clean air through a hood or hamlet. Poppers equipped with a high efficiency particulate air or HEPA filters provide 99.97% particulate filtration efficiency. We have a specific uses for indication of popper. Popper is used proper collection and disassembly. We have when we are using the popper to, to have a proper collection and disassembly. Popper after use cleaning and disinfection Popper HEPA filter change, popper battery replacement, and popper training and education. All these measures or aspects must be considered when you are using the popper machine. Thank you so much for attending this session or lecture, and we are there for any question. So please don't hesitate to contact us at any time. Thank you so much.